I'm trying to think of a way to do this without taking anything away from you. Right? I don't want to do that. That's not my intent. And so, hands on the table. You have permission to be happy. It's just, there's a way that we do it when we're young. And there's a way that you should be doing it when you get a little older. You can do it sooner rather than later so that you don't end up hurting yourself along the way. What do I mean by that? Well, when you're really, really happy, I was like this. I was really, really happy. <laughs> I still am happy, but I was more positive than usual. And again, I'm not saying you don't have to be positive. Really, I really want you just to um, listen to this because if you find yourself constantly getting angry, if you find yourself constantly getting frustrated with the world, people and or things, it's probably because you're too happy. It's weird, I know. When I first heard this, I thought it was strange. But when I really sat there and listened, I couldn't help it. The person was describing me. You know? Happy people have a tremendous capacity for optimism. Right? We skip around everywhere. We're shining all the time with the sun. Everything's going to go great. But it doesn't take long until our day shows up in a way that's unexpected. And then <laughs> a little, a little crinkle in our forehead. Why did that happen? We say, maybe the day will get better, but it doesn't. Things get worse. People have conversations with us, conversations that we'd rather not listen to. Money disappears. Things just don't work out. Maybe the weather doesn't work out or you miss your bus. Just all these little inconveniences chip away at our optimism. And then heck, it's probably only five o'clock in the afternoon. And now we're a pale comparison to who we were in the beginning of the day. You know? After a while of this happening, you'll start to disassociate from the happy-go-lucky person that you thought you were. And you will start to associate with a more, well, negative, down-on-your-luck type of individual. And it's only because the sum totality of your experiences within your past that you can look back on now start to reflect a different type of individual. Now, you don't want that. If you're not there yet, that's great. And I'll tell you how to get out of that in a second, how to prevent that from happening. Okay. But first off, why is this happening? And why does this happen to younger people? Well, it's because we're born into a world and we're told well, perceptions and ways of viewing said world that seem quite fairy tale like quite nice, right? The world is just going to be open to us, <laughs> especially in our educational phase or during our educational phase, the teachers, as well as ours, our parents will tell us that if we just get good grades, that the world's going to open up to us and we're going to get jobs just thrown our way. But we all know, especially if you've left school or university at this stage in your life, that people aren't all the willing to accept you, to take you on as an employee, right? Oftentimes you need to be qualified before you can get qualified, right? Have the qualification before you can get the job and to have the qualification, you need to have the job. It's weird. It's weird. It's a weird place. But you'll start to realize that a lot of the things that you were brought up to believe don't actually hold weight in the, in the real world at all. If you're unlucky, you'll start taking this new world view and you'll start becoming quite pessimistic. Things don't always work out or things just aren't the way they're supposed to be or the world sucks or I don't want to be here. It can go pretty extreme. But here's the thing. You don't have to be pessimistic if you can't be optimistic. You don't have to take that nihilistic view of the world and run with it. It's simple. Rather than going to one or the other extreme, you have to develop a new way of perceiving the world. And that is as such. The world is different, right? I don't know it yet. 
and I'm just getting to learn the way of the world. And then by doing so, I should probably let go of how I was taught to believe the world runs itself and how it's going to react to me. I should let go of all of that and instead show up in the world and just figure it out by way of my experience, you know? Cartoon shows showed me that I should rely on people, right? Teamwork. But life hasn't shown me that at all, so perhaps I should lower my level of optimism when it comes to group activities. And just kind of keep it there. Relationships. Although they seem great on TV, because they're showing the highlights and the honeymoon period, and not after, I've experienced after. I guess what I was taught about the whole relationship paradigm was false. And that there's more to it than that. Hmm. That changes my priorities. Now I don't want to be in a relationship long term. Perhaps I should focus on work instead, family and or other things. You see? So, that being said, let's lower the bar on relationships, which will change how I show up in the world. What I spend my time on, right? Traveling to other countries. This is something that I completely fell into. I thought that the ads that I saw on TV, the brochures that I saw, the flyers, I thought that the destination depicted on these forms of marketing were actually what I'd see once I got into specific countries, such as Bali, for example, and a whole host of others. No, there's this thing in media called glamour advertising when they boost the saturation up on certain images that they had shot in these countries they also make sure to not get any of the tourists in there or they'll just crop them out of the photo completely sometimes superimposing entirely different backgrounds on these images to make the destination look glamorous i'd get there and no <laughs> it's anything but there's only one place that I've traveled to in the world that actually matches the brochure, and that's Costa Rica. It's freaking beautiful. So maybe I should lower the bar, my level of optimism on traveling. You've got to look at the world like this. You've got to meet it where it's at so that you're not getting disappointed. You'll notice very quickly, actually instantly, just like I did, that you'll be much more of a happier person because your happiness won't be squelched out by disappointment. It's huge. Then you actually start becoming a happy person, right? Not as happy as you were before, but I'll talk about how to get there in a second. It's a different system. Matter of fact, I'll write a note of that now. So you'll start to become happy and you'll notice that it'll last days, weeks, months, and even years. No, it won't be all the way up here just yet, but at least it'll be more authentic and realistic to your environment around you. Okay, now don't tell anyone that you're doing this because they're going to come back at you with, well, you're just pessimistic, right? No. They're struggling with the idea of letting go of their happiness that they wake up with every single morning, right? Don't listen to them. Because you know otherwise. If you're watching this and you've made it this far, you know otherwise. Most people tune out if they're like, well... The former, right? So you have grounds here for real change if you take what I'm saying and you do it. Trust me, it won't take long. I did this sitting on the toilet, <laughs> all right? It took like two minutes. I just sat there and I thought about all the areas of my life that upset me. Why they upset me? What level of optimism do I have within these areas? And how can I see it differently in a more realistic way? so that I'm not let down all the time. And it worked. Now, if you want to go a little higher when it comes to a level of happiness, not optimism, but happiness, what you've got to do is you've got to have more things to be happy about, you know, more reasons to be happy. Start planning things in advance, things that are going to make you happy, okay? Seeing certain friends, right? Changing what you're eating, looking forward to specific things that you're eating, okay? Um, what else can you do? If you're in a relationship, plan things with that person that you know are guaranteed to make you happy because you've done them before, 
all right? Essentially what I'm saying here is stack up the things to be happy about so that your happiness meter can shoot right up. Not your optimism, but your happiness. And it will be, well, everlasting. You'll find that you can kind of break the, well, the ceiling to your happiness, you know, when it comes to how you were in the beginning, but it will, it will have more depth, more complexity. You'll understand the recipe of being a happy individual long-term.